Welcome to ITV Gold and uh, this is Pian. Today we are honored to have uh, Sheila Seth, uh, whose life's journey is nothing short of extraordinary. Born in Chennai, raised in Bengaluru and now calling Toronto her home. Uh, Sheila is a dynamic trailblazer, armed with a degree in sociology and mass communications. She seamlessly blends academia with her journalistic flair. From being a full-time mom in Ethiopia to making a mark as a reporter in Malawi, her recent book, Journey Through Captivity, reflects her spirit of resilience. Currently residing in Canada, she continues to share her vibrant travel experiences through Family Flavors magazine. So let's welcome Sheila Ji. Welcome. How are you? Welcome to ITV Gold. Thank you, Pia Ji, uh, for having me on your show. And I'm very happy to be here with you. You know, it's a uh, pleasure is all mine. And I'm glad that finally we connected and, you know, we are talking to each other. So why don't we talk about your book? So tell me what inspired your journey to journey through captivity and why I picked the Ethiopian uh, famine of 1983 as the backdrop. Uh, <clears throat> The main inspiration to write the book uh, came from the fact that I had to share a slice of my life mm -hmm. uh, to the world, uh, which remained dormant for more than 40 years. Uh, the Ethiopian famine of 1983 uh, has a significance, of course, because of the global humanitarian crisis it had uh, because of famine, drought, and war. Mm -hmm. But especially, it has a big, a great significance to us because my husband, who is the main character of the book, was mm -hmm. kidnapped and held hostage for 49 days uh, while working with Save the Children Fund UK, where he and his team were responsible for setting up the feeding centers uh, to feed more than 12,000 malnourished children three times a day. Mm -hmm. uh, so this was a place where millions from the north, uh, fleeing from war, drought and famine, mm -hmm. were displaced, displaced and they sought refuge in the camps. Now, as uh, we know that the book is, it's, uh, the book is a tribute to the refugees and the people who actually were displaced by famine and the natural disasters. So, you know, it all sounds so like, of course, challenges for you and going through that emotional turmoil. So tell me, how did you capture the, uh, I would say, intense 49 days of captivity in your book? Uh, well, first, uh, first and foremost, because I'm, I'm the spouse of um, the captive, Mm -hmm. And uh, bringing, I had to bring the <clears throat> uh, bring the book to, I mean, bring the uh, writings or a diary of my husband during his captivity to to life. And uh, it was during this period that uh, I actually experienced with my husband, of course, in a different setup. Uh, I was not a captive like him, but the diary which actually uh, shows the journey through the 49 days mm -hmm. uh, was written in small phrases and uh, the daily uh, daily movement of uh, him mm -hmm. during this time. But for me, I had to transform the entire diary, uh, creating vivid descriptions and uh, certain sensory details where I used uh, dialogues and flashbacks uh, to push, uh, to push, uh, sorry, the, to push the story forward, mm -hmm. and uh, also to reduce my emotional, uh, emotional fog. So, uh, Sheila Ji, I would want you to share a memorable moment from uh, your writing journey that deeply impacted you. Uh, sure. Uh, bringing, of course, the diary to life, it brought me a sense of accomplishment and it was uh, therapeutic as well. Mm -hmm. But uh, I must say that this was the time during COVID 
<clears throat> COVID-19, that life, our lifestyles changed and we started staying more and more indoors. Uh, day in and day out, we were losing our, our dear ones to the wrath of COVID. And uh, this, uh, this actually, uh, I, I just had a feeling within myself that this was, I had to race with time and somehow leave a legacy behind for the future generations to come. Mm -hmm. So, can you just tell me, you know, Ethiopia's evolution through three regimes is significant in your book. So how did you handle uh, history's accuracy while keeping the story personal and emotional? Uh, the, the main, uh, since the main character of the story is my husband who lived his life in Ethiopia during the regime of uh, Emperor Haile Selassie. Mm -hmm. And uh, then he returned as a medical doctor to serve the country uh, in 1978. Mm. Uh, but this was during the time of Colonel Mangesto, uh, who was also, it was, I mean, the party was known as Dirk, and it was a Marxist, Leninist, uh, type of a party system. Hmm. Then once again, he left in 1989 and returned in 2000 with UNICEF hmm. uh, to Ethiopia when the new coalition government had uh, was in power. And uh, to keep a balance uh, between the historical facts, I had to do a lot of research and of course, uh, my personal experience as well, because I was quite familiar with the, uh, the social and the cultural background of the country. Mm -hmm. uh, I could put the two together and uh, also uh, the ethnicity, the, the social structure uh, was not that difficult for me to relate as I had spent my formative years in Ethiopia mm -hmm. from 19... 80 to 89, and then once again from 2000 to 2004. Uh, so I was quite familiar, but of course, uh, I had to provide some kind of cultural and emotional tilt to the to my writing, mm -hmm. and in order to resonate with my readers. Mm -hmm. So I, it was, uh, it was, uh, I had to bring a balance between history and my personal writings, mm -hmm. and that's how it worked. So I'm, you know, Sheilaji, just wondering, you know, balancing mm -hmm. the emotional toll while writing as Mahindra's spouse, how did you manage? Well, I must say it was, uh, it was a very difficult journey for me. And I must say that admit, uh, I must admit that my writing journey was a mental challenge, actually, and quite disturbing at times because I had to actually relive those moments uh, when I when my children were just five and one, wow, one old. Uh, so, as a mom, I had to be very protective, not to show my emotions, and at the same time, I had to keep a bold face in front of the world. And I must say that there was a lot of fear and uncertainty when I in my writing process mm -hmm. because I was not very sure if I would be able to complete my dream project. Mm. Uh, this was a kind of, I could say that it was a gratitude towards my husband that I had to, I had to share. Mm -hmm. And uh, also I had to be grateful to the people who supported me during those times. Uh, so this was a way of uh, projecting this. And I must say that, that the journey was like a horror movie. My writing journey was like a horror movie playing in the background while I slept. I did use a lot of flashbacks as one if one, when one reads the book. Mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of character arc, dialogues in order to push the story forward. Mm -hmm. and also to reduce my mental fog. Mm -hmm. So, you know, talking about the book, what takeaways do you hope readers get from Journey Through Captivity? 
Well, Journey Through Captivity is a book of courage and resilience uh, in times of adversity uh, and embracing the challenge and keeping your mind cool and patient in circumstances when people are under difficult circumstances, unforeseen events, and uh, it can be very, it's like a mental challenge too. Mm -hmm. Positivity in times of crisis could be rewarding, and I'm sure the people who are facing mental challenges at present, uh, due to COVID-19 and other reasons, uh, would definitely be able to connect. Uh, writing uh, will would connect with me, and I felt I feel that writing a memoir is something very different. Uh, it teaches you. Well, during this difficult time, I mean, the whole incident that happened, or the journey that Mahendra went through, well, it, it teaches one that the, it teaches us the value of associating small things in life mm -hmm. and uh, also appreciating the basic needs of survival, which is, could be just simple as water, food, and um, clothing and shelter, whatever, because he just had a few pairs of whatever he had. Mm -hmm. the, the food was really very basic. Uh, whatever was like given to him, he had to accept it. And uh, which was of course the local food and some meat. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, there's a little a short uh, incident that I have to relate here because one of the person who, he was a media person who actually joined, joined them later in the journey. Uh, he was actually, he became vegetarian uh, just seeing how the meat came on his plate. Wow. Wow. Uh, and this, uh, the another important thing that uh, one takes away from this book is the loss of freedom of movement and speech, mm -hmm. which was a constant struggle. And, but we also say that you know, there is always light at the end of the tunnel. Um, so positive outlook and positivity is a must. Absolutely. You said it very well. Any advice for aspiring authors tackling personal memoir with challenging themes? Of course, because authentic, authenticity or being authentic is very crucial in memoir writing. Mm -hmm. Uh, and especially when it is a true life story, it is not like a fiction, but because you are living through those times and uh, it, <clears throat> it also like gives you, uh, gives you a lot of space, uh, your internal space, the per because it's a personal ref reflection. But I always felt that writing or during the memoir that it's very important to seek support of friends, mm -hmm. uh, family, or fellow writers, because that could give you some kind of an insight uh, and a push forward, uh, comparing your own story with theirs. Uh, and I'm sure writing a memoir also, I used, as I said earlier, that I, I loved using flashbacks and uh, a few dialogues here and there, and the, of course, very uh, human interaction which went through during the journey. Mm -hmm. uh, it, uh, it was very interesting to touch those areas in order to just soften your emotions while you're writing. Right. And uh, being, I would uh, uh, say this to my fellow writers, the journey was not difficult, it was full of challenges, I often felt that would I ever be able to complete my dream project, but um, at the end, at the end, I was patient, persistent, and I must say persistent, and but more patient uh, when it underwent series of editing, uh, editing phases. It was not easy. Mm -hmm. uh, at the same time, because we always still have, I mean, we do have still connections with Ethiopia. We have a part of our family living there. So in this 
a matter we I had to be very careful as not to touch or reflect any political connections with the whole thing. Right. Because the country is undergoing a lot of difficult times. Mm -hmm. As one knows because of the because of war again and a lot of ethnicity in the country too mm -hmm. and a lot of other differences. Uh, so I have to be extremely careful in writing a memoir, which is uh, like, uh, and then uh, again, uh, more so because uh, Mahendra is connected with the United Nations, mm -hmm. what UNICEF over the years, uh, and Save the Children Fund earlier in the, during the time of captivity, we had to be very, very careful as when we were I mean, there was a lot of dissection that had to be done during my right. writing process. Right. Now, you know, very important question, and I'm sure everybody would be interested to know, where can we grab a copy of your book? Well, the book is available on Amazon worldwide. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would uh, like finally try to sort of wind up my uh, talk with by saying, that the book is a tribute to the refugees and the displaced all over the world. And I say that they have lost their homes, but not their hopes. Absolutely. And thank you so much and uh, wishing you all the best. Thank you very much, uh, Piaji, for, uh, for, for having me the uh, platform. Thank you.